Uh, there is one good <clears throat> thing as it comes to transportation this budget, uh, transit aids, uh, which apply to not only Milwaukee County, to the city of Waukesha, city of Racine, city of Kenosha, Fox Valley, Madison, other places. Transit aids do go in this budget. And for that, to the members of the legislature, the governor and others, uh, we're thankful for that because obviously uh, transit uh, long term here and across the state is going to have its, its challenges. But you look at other things, GTA, uh, general transportation aids, which uh, the mayor alluded to for local streets, county trunk highways um, are being reduced in this budget. When you look at things like um, even highway maintenance dollars, either they're being reduced or in some cases, for example, with the county, we're being told that our service is being adjusted so that uh, we got correspondence uh, in our highway department about a week or two ago that says the money will be the same, but now they're shifting what we do. So w in many cases we'll be going through and mowing like maybe once or twice a year uh, in areas that people are routinely expecting um, once or twice a month. Um, those are the changes the state is handing down because, of course, those highway funds that we, the county uses and other counties use uh, across the state come from the state government through the state budget, so that'll be altered. Um, and you also see a, a disturbing trend that's continued in the past, maybe not as big. In the two previous state budgets, we saw about a billion, about a billion one, I think it was, rated from the transportation fund. It is less than that now, but it's still over $200 million uh, that's taken out of segregated funding, which is meant for the transportation fund, money that we pay through our gas tax for our vehicle registration funds. Those two are the largest sources of the transportation fund, about 93%. Uh, those go in the transportation fund, and yet at least the joint finance version takes over 200 million of those dollars and puts them into the general fund. That's money that takes away from any of the options we're going to talk about on this panel here today and instead puts it in the GPR, which, of course, is open for other debates but takes it away from transportation. Okay. Okay. County Executive Walker. Well, it, and, and as members of this panel know, I've been pushing for regional cooperation when it comes to transit and transportation options. Uh, for some time. I think uh, doing that in a way that addresses, as Jeff Stone mentioned earlier, too many Jeffs, I've got to make sure I say the last name, <laughs> uh, but Jeff Stone said earlier that when people think about jobs and opportunities, they don't think about uh, county or municipal lines. They think about where's my job, how do I get there? We've already done some of that cooperation. Um, our transit system and Waukesha Metro uh, just eliminated the transfers uh, that were additional fees on top of that before we've done other things. We're going to jointly look at how we do our fare boxes and things of that nature to try and expand that kind of cooperation. We want to do the same sorts of things in the future with Racine and ultimately even Kenosha County or Kenosha, the city, uh, with their, uh, their system there as well. But, yeah, you, you look at this. I mean, uh, the mayor and I both served. We've both, I've served with both Jeffs here. Um, I think very highly of them, but you look at what happened in joint finance, and that's just like a bloody massacre. It's a wonder, no wonder they did it at 2 o'clock in the morning, because to create two different RTAs, uh, the way that they created them, not just with the funding source, but my goodness, you look at the way that it's set up. I mean, it, it just bluntly, it's done for political purposes. John Lehman, the state senator in Racine County, has got a real dilemma. On one side of the freeway, he's got people who want KRM and are willing to pay a sales tax for it. On the other side of the freeway, he's got people who are ready to vote him out of office if he puts a sales tax in. So we, de facto, the rest of the state, gets a product that is just untenable uh, because of one person's political future. Now, I like John Lehman, um, and I, I certainly don't wish him Ill, Ill with this, but that's the reality of what we're facing. It is something that is an absolute mess. It's even more of a mess when you consider not only for me, but for the county executive in Racine County, how you can have three counties being a part of an RTA and have one county, Kenosha, having a county executive appointed and have the other two counties not have the county executive have appointments on it is nothing more than politics. It's a real simple reason. Two of us are Republicans. One of us is Republican. Republicans aren't in control, so the two Republicans get voted off. Now, I'm not going to be the county executive forever. A few of my colleagues here might be clapping when I say that, but, uh, um, but the reality is we need to be making decisions that affect long-term transportation needs based on the needs of the future, not on the politics of today. That's a prime example. The other RTA, which in my mind, if you're going to do regional cooperation, there shouldn't be two separate ones, one for KRM and one for transit. You should be dealing with it on a regional basis, period. The other RTA has five members that control a countywide sales tax where countywide residents don't get representation. Five members, the only one that comes close is a county resident appointed by the, uh, the governor of the state of Wisconsin. The other four people are two, and I like the mayor, but two by the mayor, even though there's 19 municipalities in Milwaukee County, two of those people are represented by one municipality out of 19, and the other two are represented by the county board chairman who has 
one one nineteenth uh, of the representation of Milwaukee County. So for people who don't live in the city of Milwaukee, they really de facto don't have anybody to turn to uh, when they look at what happens with this RTA. You've got further confusion with the money for parks and EMS and 15% that goes to the city of Milwaukee, none of which is related to transportation, uh, even though it's under an RTA which is supposed to be involving transit. A real mess, a real debacle. Who knows if they'll fix it. Maybe they'll do what Jeff Blaley said and take it out of the budget. One way or another, they've got to deal with it. Otherwise, we're going to have a mess that, that supersedes my tenure in office <laughs> and probably any of us up here on the panel. Okay, Mayor uh, Bear wants Five to seconds. I want to set the, se the record straight. Uh, Senator Lehman, his name has been mentioned. It is members of both parties from Racine County. It is not, let's not single out Senator Lehman. But no, that's not right. Yeah. You, you've got, you've got Robin, Vo no, Robin Voss opposes it. He's always opposed it. He's from the west side of the county. So that makes him a seat No, you've got the it? other, Tom, you've got the other two representatives from the east side who have always supported a sales tax. But it's the it's only person who's in a pickle is Senator Lehman. But if Robin, Voss, if Robin Voss had his way, we wouldn't have anything. But is that what you want? But he's not in the pickle. I'm no, he's not a pickle. He wants to kill everything. The re but, the reason <laughs> we, but the reason we have a car rental as opposed to a sales tax, now you can have an opinion one way or the other whether you support or not support that, but the reason we have the hybrid that we have right now, which I think everybody on this panel agrees is not workable, is because you've got a senator who, and I understand his, his area, the county executive, uh, would be in a similar position. You've got one half. Who is a Republican? That's my point. Is it's, it's a Racine County issue. But he doesn't have a vote issue. on it. It's he not a John Lehman on issue. It, and he particularly doesn't have it's a vote a Racine on it County with issue. this RTA. Okay. Well, representatives. Well, maybe some people, but they. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. But hey, uh, now, S Scott Walker, I hear you're running for governor. I, I heard that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, uh, okay, if you're elected, is remaking the transportation funding system part of part of what you need to do? Sure. You need to have reforms all the way around. I, I'd start with. What Jeff talked about, you know, prior to 2002, um, Republican or Democrat didn't touch the transportation fund. Simple fact. Since 2002, this governor and this legislature, back and forth, both parties, Jeff's right, but prior to 2002, didn't matter where Wally Konecki was the speaker, Dave Prost was the speaker, Scott Jensen was the speaker, Democrat or Republican didn't touch the segregated fund because it's a segregated fund for transportation purposes. We've got to get back to that, and it's a long-term issue, as the mayor talked about, because even taking $205 million out of that segregated fund for this biennium not only takes $205 million out of the fund, it compounds because that's money that otherwise would be in the fund, would be working on projects. As all of you in transportation know, two, four, five, six years down the road, $205 million today is not $205 million. It's a fraction. That's why we see such heavy adjustments between the cost projections for the zoo interchange versus the Marquette interchange. Sure, there's more property acquisition. Sure, there's more space that has to be done, but part of it's just the inflation and construction costs. Um, secondly, um, what, what two things that Jeff Stone talked about um, I think have to be part of that plan. One, when you look at things, and we've talked about a lot today, the uh, I-94 from the state line up to Milwaukee <coughs> and that corridor, um, I don't believe you enact tolls. Uh, I'm not an advocate for tolls, but I do think if you look around the country, congestion pricing, if you're going to add a lane, it makes sense that the users of that lane would say, I'll pay a premium, I'll get an I-pass like we have in other states, Illinois, Indiana, other places like that, I'll pay a premium to use that lane. If I don't want to pay the premium, I'll go in the slower, more congested lanes. I think that's a reasonable expectation. We got to think a bit more uh, user specific, and as all of you do in the, in the private sector, how do you add value? And if you're going to add value, how do people pay a little bit more for that? Uh, the other part is I, I think we need to look at broadening our base. If we're going to ask those who use the systems that we have for transportation, we need to broaden it beyond just the two core, 93 percent of all our transportation fund are the vehicle registration fee and the gas tax. We're, I shouldn't say one of the few, but there are many other states. Jeff and I, when we were both in the legislature, worked on this. But, for example, many other states use the sales tax collected for vehicle-related purchases, be it a car or truck sale, be it a repair, be it other things specifically related to the transportation. They use those sales taxes and put them into the transportation fund, not into the general fund. Obviously, that would take a challenge. It's something when, when I was in there with Jeff in our caucus, we proposed phasing that in because you can't do that overnight because of the adjustment you have to make in the general fund. But I think long term, that makes sense as well because then that's money. If you use a car, you buy a car, you do something with a car or truck, you use something with a transportation device, <coughs> you use it and put that money into the transportation fund. Anything more? 
Well, when you talk about uh, new technologies, I just put a plug in for what probably will be the quickest implemented, and that is bus rapid transit. Um, we had, uh, Rita was talking before about UWM. We've got a great connection to two, soon to be two UWM campuses, because with the county's portion of that 91 and a half million, we're looking at a route that would, you know, be over here at one end of the UWM campus, come down the Farwell Prospect Quarter, right to Wisconsin Avenue, head west through downtown, all the way through Wauwatosa out to the county grounds, and would connect us to the new School of Engineering that we just signed the resolution for, and Michael Cutter, he has now departed us, but who is the large benefactor for making that possible. <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Careful how you say that. Yeah, there are a lot of nonprofits <laughs> that just about had a heart attack when I said that that way too, but who's left us for a moment, but who, uh, um, uh, that connects us to those two campuses, and not only connects those two, but connects it with a, a new technology, in fact, arguably one of the most rapid growing uh, fastest new technologies out there that even, for example, the mayor and I went with Michael and others to a place like Denver, which has probably one of the biggest uh, light rail systems. One of the most popular, most requested new routes was a bus rapid transit route going from downtown Denver out to Boulder uh, because it's adaptable, it's flexible, it, it can change, it has all the benefits of a fixed rail system at a fraction of the cost and with the adaptivity uh, to be able to move to adjust to where new routes and new adjustments are. Uh, so that's something we're going to move forward on. We believe uh, with a portion of the money we get from the land sale, we can uh, cover our local match, not have to put any additional property tax levy in to match that, and we could get for move forward on purchasing the hybrid buses, putting in places the things we need from the city of Milwaukee and the city of <laughs> Wauwatosa to give us the easements we need to put in place those either bus only or bus priority lanes, and that really affords us the technology that is new that, that really feeds into that backbone that that Michael Cudahy was talking about earlier. But the only other thing i just say on high-speed rail, I, um, I, I think there's both the talk of Chicago to Milwaukee, but also a lot of talk lately of Milwaukee to Madison. As I understand it from last week, this, uh, the state got word that while originally they thought the stimulus funds would provide 100% of the funding for about, I think it's about a half a billion dollar cost, now it looks like it'll be more likely to be the 80-20 match, which means I, I think the legislature authorized, or at least joint finance authorized up to $120 million, uh, in bonding from the state. Certainly uh, one concern I have is not as a, a means of blocking that, but rather as a, you, you talk about all these priorities, I look at the cost, and I'd like to see the cost shaved a little bit, but the cost of the zoo interchange, and have real concern that that might get delayed at the same time we might be pursuing something like that. And I know at least for the businesses I talk to that have any sort of delivery issues, that is a, just as paramount as the Marquette interchange was because whether you're the uh, former uh, Miller Brands, uh, now bought out with the Capital Bringer, I forget what the new name is, but while uh, delivering Miller and Coors products around the area or delivering anything else, that is a vital hub for us to get in and out of and we can't delay one for the other. Uh, there's got to be a focus on getting that done for the region's economy because uh, that's an important uh, key element to our economic future. Some say it ain't broke. Don't fix it. Is it? Uh, is no, it it's quite contrary. It's actually booming. Um, so I, I was going to quibble with your uh, your initial question because I don't think there's anything wrong. In fact, six years ago we had fewer than six million passengers. Uh, last year we finished just forty three thousand under eight million passengers at General Mitchell International Airport. We have become uh, de facto Chicago's third major airport. Uh, we are a great report, uh, airport for the region. Last year we had 18,000 more cars from Illinois because people from Forest and Lake County and others. And now with another airline coming in as of November, we're going to pick up more people from northern Illinois, from all the way over from Rockford who would otherwise go to fly that airline out of Midway are going to come to Milwaukee uh, to Mitchell International Airport. And not only for transportation purposes, but it's a great asset from an economic standpoint because uh, the more flights, the more gates, the more airlines we have, uh, maintaining our hometown <coughs> airline <coughs> is a great value to turn your mic off. Oh, I touched it. And I thought it was Midway's airport turning my mic off. <laughs> um, but the, uh, it's a great asset to us, but it's uh, not only from a transportation purpose, but from an economic standpoint. That we're, you know, the airport is the front door to our business travelers in and out of this region. And uh, I think for any of you who've flown frequently for airport, you've seen we've made a major commitment. And it's a commitment that over that time that I've been here, it's been a commitment that is jointly held between my administration and through the county board. There's been a strong commitment uh, initially to double the size of the parking structure, um, to remodel all of our concourses, to redo the center concessionary mall. So you're right, it isn't broken. The caveat I would say out of this, in fact, quite the contrary, it does so well, but anybody who's familiar with FAA rules know that 
an airport is something under the current structure you can't take any value out of, you can't take any profit out of, and apply it to anything else. For example, you couldn't apply it to other transportation needs like transit uh, in this community. The only exception to that uh, is through one of the five pilot programs that the federal government has uh, to contract out um, the operations of the airport on. There are five pilots. One is covered by Midway. They got a bid on it. Unfortunate for Mayor Daley, they got it on September 24th. Um, and so while the bid was good, the financing hasn't been, and they're still at the table getting it financed. One is for general aviation, and the three remaining are for airports like ours. Chicago did this already years ago with Skyway, the toll bridge, where they contracted it out. Um, they got over a billion dollars for that. They got a half a billion dollars for their parking structures, including those uh, under the Millennium uh, Park. Uh, and they were looking to get, I think, something over $2 billion uh, for Chicago's Midway. Now, we won't get that amount, but we could get something, uh, you know, proportionately uh, close to that. And, and our proposal had been if we got that, we would then buy down debt, and then with the, the reduction in debt service we'd pay, we'd use that as something to supplement, or not supplement, but to add to the amount that we can pay in on an ongoing basis into supporting our mass transit system. It would be another tool in the transportation toolbox uh, to help with our transportation, in this case, transit options here in the community. The timing for us is actually pretty good because even though Chicago is kind of in a gray area right now until they get the financing worked out, uh, we have looked at this and believe it will probably take, um, when we get a true green light from our partners in the county board, upwards to two years to make that happen before you actually would have a deal ready to have action on. Well, by that time, knock on wood, God help us if it isn't, the market will be better, uh, other things will be better, and investors will be able to pay a premium to get at that. The last thing I'll tell you, if anybody says, cringes at privatization, out of the thousands of employees that we have at General Mitchell International Airport, only a couple hundred are county employees. Right now, everybody else is private. They're airlines. You go to concessions. County employees don't run any of the concessions. If you go to Nona Bartolotta's at the end of the, the D concourse, little advertising, one of the great new additions, Bartolotta's brand new full service Italian restaurant that you can v access with a boarding pass on any of the three concourses. Uh, that's one of my new sponsors <laughs> for your event now. No. <laughs> um, but y y with, with all those things, all those employees, all the concessions, everything else we has that we have right there right now is already private. Uh, we already do that. We do a long-term lease for concessions. Why not do a long-term lease with operations? The one advantage you get over the idea that Jeff and Jeff had, which I'm not de degrading, but is you still get the county controlling the asset. It doesn't go to an authority. It doesn't go away from the taxpayers. It's still a county asset. It's just you do a long-term lease for the operations of it, and then in return can take some of those profits beyond what it takes to operate and put that into something else, in this case, our proposal is to put it in the debt service, which then would help the transit system. Can I just add one more thing? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Oddly enough, even though the, the port's the city, I, I actually chair the St. Lawrence Seaway Development Corporation Board, so I, I, I actually, just one well, other sure, thing go to ahead. add on that. Uh, cruise lines all throughout the system, throughout the Great Lakes, through the Seaway, are, are growing. They slowed down a little bit this past fall because of the, obviously, the global economy, uh, but the mayor is exactly right. There's a ripe potential. This is one of the favorite spots. If we could get, I mean, ideally, if you could have the TSA equivalent uh, checking people coming in so that then they could come to any port, Milwaukee, Chicago. I mean, one of the problems we had last year was you literally didn't have agents uh, that could come up here in time to, to greet uh, the crews that wanted to come to Milwaukee. That's something that's got to be worked out with the federal government. To me, a, a more reasonable approach is to put people at the front end so then they're checked no matter what port uh, they go to, Superior, Green Bay, Chicago, Milwaukee, you name it. Uh, but at a time when, for your cargo, your traditional cargo, you usually have to have a good market coming in and going out. So even if you have wind turbines coming in, which is a growing issue for us not only here in Wisconsin but throughout the Midwest because it's great to come in here and then send them to the Dakotas, other places as well, you've got to make <coughs> sure you've got grain or other things going out because shippers will not just bring something in and then have something go empty. It's got to be full in, full out uh, to make it economical for them on the, on the margins they're on. Uh, the other part is just to, to emphasize, and I, I know the mayor's talked with Dave Ross, I have in Superior, but this is a huge issue. Uh, it's something that affects this budget because just under half a million dollars worth of fees for ballast water discharge are included in the, in the biennial budget for this. But it's got to be altered uh, because, and it's got to be not just altered, it's got to be dealt with on a binational basis. It's something our delegation supports. In fact, I talked last year to Senator Feingold about it extensively. 
you may all think, okay, what does it have to do with all these larger transportation issues? But it's exactly right. Whether it's Chicago for us here, or the most vivid one, you know, the Port of Superior is about a $300 million economic uh, issue uh, in that part of the state. It's nothing, nothing, as Jeff Blaley said, to go across the way a couple hundred yards into the Port of Duluth. That will have a devastating impact on Superior, Green Bay, and Milwaukee if we suddenly have higher standards. The better issue is to do what's been sitting in, in the Congress for years now that Feingold and our delegation and others support, but unfortunately Senator Barbara Boxer from California is stalling, <coughs> and that is have a standard uniform process for both the United States and Canada uh, to treat ballast water on the front end where the technology is there to make sure that we're not bringing in any invasive species or any other problems to the Great Lakes. But unfortunately it's being stalled up by somebody else in another part of the country. Vehicle registration fee and a gas tax for transportation fund. I'm not having my ga gas tax go up or something else go up unless they vote to do that for any of those other proposals. I do think it's reasonable if you're adding a new tax to have a vote, um, in this case I would suggest a binding referendum uh, for this or any other plan that imposes a new funding source for these or any other ideas. I, I do think there's a distinction out there. Uh, the other part I just, just add on a, on a policy standpoint um, is I, I, I do think, you know, we proposed, for example, I mentioned our bus rapid transit route. We proposed a, a, a spur beyond just the, the route we mentioned between UWM down Wisconsin Avenue to, to the UWM campus of, of engineering. We proposed routes in all different directions all throughout Milwaukee County, but we also talked about from a larger visionary standpoint of having those routes go in other directions. For example, there's a north-south route that would have ended just past the Northwestern Mutual Campus on Franklin and Oak Creek on 27th Street, actually adapted, started out at NML, or Northwestern Mutual, it's not NML anymore, Northwestern Mutual, got to remember the financial services as well, but the would have ended there, but as the proposal came about, we realized the Wheaton Franciscans were going to have a hospital about a quarter of a mile or half a mile down with a bus rapid transit route for very little money. We, could, we had the flexibility to take it from the Northwestern Mutual Campus down to the Wheaton Franciscan campus and still allow that had that system been in play. We'd like to take it a step further and then have a route like that then transfer into a frequent flyer route onto the freeway, go through Racine down to Kenosha County, do the same thing along the lakefront, go out to Waukesha, go north all the way up to Port Washington, Ozaki, go west to West Bend and to into Washington County. Those are all things you can adapt uh, with a rubber tired system that's bus rapid transit. But let me, but Mayor, I've given two other options, neither of which require a new tax. My opinion is if I said you need a new tax, you need a new registration fee, you need something new on top of that, then the voters of the state should have a right to weigh in on that. But let's say if what they it don't, is. Let's, let's say what it is. Let, let's have the honest debate as to, we know what the cost is. The cost for these two projects is $4.2 billion. We've got that side of the ledger. What we don't have is the other side of the ledger for elected officials and politicians to say, fine, this is what I want to spend. This is how we're going to spend it. Not this funny money where well, we're going to figure it out five or ten years from now. I think we owe it to the citizens of the state because I am concerned. You, you, saw what, you see what's going on in California. You see what's going around this country where we're making these decisions because we're trying to convince the public that they can have it both ways. I there, would there was just, let, me, let me just finish so I, I understand this, and I'm uh, hot on this. In Philadelphia, <laughs> just now, the, the mayor several months ago proposed a 19% property tax increase. There was a poll that was done that said 83% of the people in that city opposed that 19% property tax increase. In the exact same poll, a majority of people said they opposed a 1% service cut. So the people wanted to have it both ways, and I understand that. The reason is because politicians, we're, we're letting them believe they can have it both ways. Is there, is there a person in this room who thinks we can do $5 billion worth of transportation projects and not have, a, not have a funding source. Let's get honest with the people and tell them, if this is what you want, fine. This is how much it's going to cost us. That's my point. But, but May, you're right, and I would argue in the last 45 minutes, 50 minutes, I've issued two ideas on the table to do that. The critique you gave, I think, is actually a pretty good critique of what we've had in the last six years from this state government, uh, from this current governor's administration, in terms of rating $1.1 billion out of the transportation fund without deferring some of the projects out there and saying we're going to do that, which is why in this budget we also end up deferring all the bonding we have, I think $285 million worth of bonding that we don't pay any principal on, we only pay interest on. That's doing exactly what you said about your children's future. We need to speak out about that. I agree with that. But that's why when you talk about transportation projects, 
I've identified things in addition to the vehicle registration fee and the gas tax. I think we should pull in the state sales tax collected on vehicle uh, related services. I think that should be done. I think those are the sorts of things that would help build your transportation fund and ultimately help you fund projects like this and the others we've talked about. I the county standpoint, uh, three Bs. Um, you look at benefits, borrowing, and budgets. Uh, in terms of benefits, uh, our workforce uh, from 2002 to now is down by over 20 percent, uh, largely through attrition, but also through contracting out for services where we don't have such higher legacy costs than that. So we've made major reductions, which is why one of the reasons why last year with some other adjustments, uh, we actually finished with a, a slight budget surplus. You look at borrowing, um, again, one of those things where in the past, state, local, federal government have looked at borrowing capital budgets kind of as free money. We didn't see it that way. We've cut our debt by 10%. Uh, that's also helped us with debt service and helped us adjust to this budget, uh, particularly in the last year. And then uh, budget, budget reforms, uh, we're trying to look, in, and the example with BRT and the uh, UWM land sale is a good example where when you get one-time uh, pots of money, uh, we're trying to plug that into one-time sources. So for example, with a portion of the money we get from the UWM land sale for the school engineering, we want to apply about six and a half million of that to the local share for bus rapid transit. It's a one-time cost. It's a one-time fund of money that comes in. It doesn't open up a new ongoing concern uh, that we don't have the ability to fill in on.